Hello everyone. So today is the November TBR. Um, if you've seen my previous um, October wrap up, you know already two of the books that are going to be on this one. So I'll start with those two. The first one that I'm currently reading is The Binding Song by Elodie Harper. Um, I'm going to be reading this along with another one, which is the book club book, but I'll get to that later. So if you want the synopsis to this one, go and check out my October TBR. It saves me reading back through it all over again. Same with this next one, which is The, Cof the Coffin Path by Catherine Clements. And like basically every month so far, all of these books are library books. I am going to get around to doing like one or two months where they're my books instead of the library ones. So the next one I am currently reading while I'm reading The Binding Song is this month's book club, um, well, the place I live in's book club book, and that is The Red Necklace by Sally Gardner. So, okay. this is a different synopsis to the one I read because I had to look it up and um, on Goodreads and pick the book from there. So this is this one's synopsis is Paris 1789. While the aristocracy dine, dance, gossip and gamble their way to disaster, the poor and starving dream of revolution. Enter the boy, Jan Magoza, destined to be a hero, Tatu the dwarf, his friend and mentor, Sido, unloved daughter of the foolish Marquise de Villdivel, and the sinister Count Kaliovsky, who holds half the aristocracy in his thrall, in thrall to him. The drama moves from Paris to London and back as the revolution gathers momentum and the hope of liberty and the dream of equality are crushed beneath the wheel of terror. So, I have, like I said, I have started this. I'm only up to page nine and already like, I'm, I'm blown away with how well this book has started, to be honest. Like I said, it's only page nine. I've only really just started it. And everything about it is wanting me to read more. It starts out really, really interesting. Um, this book was chosen because it's based around a historical event, so the revolution. Um, and this month, so the month of November, was chosen a history um, fiction book for the book club group. Um, there is a non-fiction book which I can't remember what one it was this time. I've got it on hold, so I'll probably um, add that in to my um, review at the end of the month, because I can't remember what it is at the moment. So the next one I'm reading is The Replacement by Brina Yovanov. Um, I did start this one last month because I couldn't find my other two books at one stage. Um, I'm going to retry it this month and see if I can actually finish it. It was a little, okay, we'll say boring for me, but I think I was after something at that point in time and it just wasn't in this book when I was reading it. So the synopsis of this one is, Mackie Doyle is the replacement. Though he lives in a small town of Gentry, pardon, sorry, Mackie comes from a world of tunnels and black murky water, a world of living dead girls ruled by little tattooed princesses. He is a replacement, left in the crib of a human baby 16 years ago. Now, because of fatal allergies to iron, blood and consecrated ground, Mackie is slowly dying in the human world. Mackie would give anything to live among us to practice on his bass guitar or spend time with an oddly intriguing girl called Tate. But when Tate's baby sister goes missing, Mackie is drawn irrevocably, irre, irre, irrevocably sorry, into the underworld of gentry. No one has mayhem. He must face the dark creatures of the slag heaps and find his right place in our world or theirs. From reading the synopsis, I think I have already put this on a TBI and a maybe last month's one, but then I just forgot that it was part of that month. But um, yeah, I'll be trying to re-get through this again. 
and hopefully it's more I can hold more of an interest in it. Um, the next one is Master of Sorrows by Justin Cole. Okay. Um, this is another one my librarian gave me. It's a recommended one. A majority of these are recommended still. I haven't actually put books on hold in a while because my librarian's done it for me each time, which is really amazing because she seems to know my taste really well and a few things she throws in that are different to what I have taste for and I've found I've enjoyed them as well. So this one is The Academy of Chien Bu has stood against magic for centuries. Hidden from the world, acting from the shadows, it trains its students to detect and retrieve magical artifacts, which is which it jealously guards from the misuse of others. Because magic is dangerous, something that heals can also harm, and a power that aids one person may destroy another. Of the Academy's many students, only the most skilled become avatars. Warrior thieves capable of infiltrating the most heavy guarded vaults, and only the most determined are trusted to resist the allure of magic. More than anything, Anver D. Breath wants to become one of them. So it's really interesting and really thick. So I might be, I'm going to be participating in a 24 hour readathon that Oz Girl on Instagram is holding. Um, this will probably be one of the ones I'll put in there because um, I'll have time to just sit down and read the whole thing. I know when I was a teenager, um, I think it's Thomas Harris. Well, that might just be who played it. No, no, Thomas Harris is the author. Anthony Hopkins was the um, actor who played it. I read through all the Hannibal Lecter series and I'd finish a book in a day and those were like 600 and more pages. And that was even with school. So I'd have school and I'd then read it and I'd still get through that money. So this is one of the ones I'm hoping to get through within the 24 hour readathon. The next one which is another for the 24 hour readathon is The Last Bell Belfour? Bellflower? No, Belfour. Belfour. Like I said, my pronunciation sucks. So this is Kate Duggan. Um, so the synopsis for this is Inoa Belfour's life is turned upside down when her beloved aunt Grizel is executed for a crime of witchcraft. Before she dies, Grizel appoints Inona as guardian of the precious family Bloodstone and tells her she must flee their village and deliver the stone to the mysterious guild of Green Lion. Accompanied by a new friend, Kel, Inona soon realises that she's awakened the powers of the Bloodstone, but it's promised to be a perilous journey the wolf mount month is no time to be on the road, and there's a witch hunter on Inona's trail, who has a strange obs obsession with the stone. When a devastating betrayal throws her into the hands of her enemies, Inona soon finds herself in the fight of her life. While she suffers the same fate as her aunt, will she suffer the same fate as her aunt, or will she escape the witch hunter and fulfil her destiny? So, it's really interesting. Um. One of the book club books is, um, well, one of the months, I'm not sure if it was this month or if it's next month, is Deaths in Salem, which is a autobiography of a witch hunter. So, it seems at the moment, a lot of things I've gone around for is witches. And fae, and ghosts. Um, so the next one, which I'm going to take a bit to get some names off of the front because like I said my librarian put it aside for me as well as for some other people and I forgot to do this earlier is The War in the Dark by Nick Setchfield let's just tape so War in the Dark by Nick Setchfield um it's got a very interesting cover to be honest I like it when the um gold in with the grey and black and the white. So the synopsis of this, which I haven't read yet, I haven't read the synopsis or anything, I think I just picked it up with the pile of books she gave me and took it home, so this is going to be interesting for me too, 
is when the assassination of a traitor, traitor trading with the enemy goes terribly wrong, British intelligence agent Christopher Winter must flee London. In a tense alliance with lethal mysterious woman named Karina Lazo Lazarova, She's, he's caught in a quest for hidden knowledge from centuries before, an occult secret written in the language of fire, a secret that will give supremacy to the nation that possesses it. Racing against the Russians, the chase takes them from demon-hunted Hungarian border to treasure-laden tunnels beneath Berlin for an impossible house, for an impossible house in Vienna to a bomb-blasted ruins in Bavaria where something unholy waits, born of power of white fire and black glass. It's a world of treachery, blood and magic. A world at war in dark. So that's rather interesting. And it jumps around the map a lot. It's actually... Oh, I don't mind seeing how all the author goes between the different locations in that. Um, so that was one of the last ones I want to do for the... 24 hour readathon. Um, this next book is another one that I haven't taken the name tag off the front of it. So I'm trying to do that. Um, after this book, the next two books that I will be um, saying is actually the next two, they're meant to be December and January's book club books because I went through and made a list of book club books for six months and then decided, well, I'll just get three months in advance, well, two months in advance so that I can read them and then they're at the library for other people. Alright, okay, so I'm covering up a name. This is called Harbour by John Ajivid Lid Lidquist. I really suck at names. Right, so that's the cover with names covered. That's the side bit with an author's name I cannot say at all. And the synopsis for this book is One ordinary winter afternoon on a snowy island, Anders and Cecile take their six-year-old daughter, Majar, across the ice to visit the lighthouse in the middle of a frozen channel. While they are exploring the lighthouse, Majar disappears, either into thin air or under thin ice, leaving not even a bloody f footprint in the snow. Two years later, Anders, a broken man, moves back to his family's abandoned home on the island. He soon realises that Majar's disappearance is only one of many strange occurrences and that his fellow islanders, including his own grandmother, knew a lot more than they were telling. As he digs deeper, Anders begins to unearth a dark and deadly secret at the heart of this small, seemingly placid town. So, sounds interesting. In a way, it kind of sounds like Devil's Day, which I'm hoping is done a lot better. This author is a renowned author and has had a lot of like really good books. Um, his first novel was Let the Right One In, which was then made into the movie Let Me In, which I didn't mind the movie. I actually haven't read the book, but I didn't mind that movie. And then he has another apparent renowned um, book called Handling the Undead. But this is the first book of his I'll be reading. And hopefully I'll be interested in it and I might pick up the others. Right. So these next two is December and January's... Yeah, December and January's books for the book club. So the first one is, I'm pretty sure, Finding Hannah by Fiona McCall McCullum. Yeah, it is, because this is the adult fiction one for December, and January is a YA fiction. Um, so this was chosen, I think, because it was romance. or No, it was chosen because it's an Australian book. It's written by an Australian author, and it's meant to be based in Australia, I'm pretty sure. But, yeah, it's because it was an Australian link sort of thing. So the synopsis for this is, Hannah Ainsley has the perfect life. An adoring husband, a close relationship with her parents, a wonderful job, and amazing friends. I'm sorry. Best of all, it's Christmas, her favourite day of the whole year. 
It's a time to share with family and friends and enjoy the festivities. But this year will be like no other. Tragedy strikes and Hannah's world is shattered. If she's going to cope, she's going to need all the support she can gather and to draw on every bit of strength. Life will never be the same again, but it's soon clear she has no alternative but to pull together and a future for the remaining fragments. As Hannah heads towards the next festive season, she will have to make a decision. Should she stay with the people who have supported her, or should she leave? Could the answer lie in a delayed gift? So, like I said, it was chosen because it's an Australian book. Um, or it might just be because it's an Australian author. I know it's Australian linked. I did have a reasoning at the time for picking it, but it's also an adult, yeah, adult book. So it fit into the adult um, fiction area. And the next one is uh, um, YA fiction, which is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Um, this one was picked because it was a contemporary, I'm pretty sure. It was also picked because it's one of the books that I've seen everywhere, heard about, wanted to read. <clears throat> so I put it on thinking that other people might be interested in it. Found out that there was a few people who were interested. But yeah, it was just one of those ones that I went, oh, it fits into the area. It's something I want to get around to reading. It's in a genre that I don't usually read. That's why I wanted to read it is because I wanted to see if I could like a contemporary book. And then it fitted in with the book club's um, genre for that month. So the synopsis for this, let's see if I can find one because that's just people's comments on it. No, there isn't. Okay. Um, give me a moment. That's a bit odd. Um, yeah. I thought it had the synopsis on the back, but they're just... Oh no, there's a small one. Right, so Star Carter's world is shattered when she is the only witness to the fatal shooting of her unarmed best friend, Kahali, by the police officer. Now that Star says... Now what Star says could destroy her community, it could also get her killed. So it's got... Right. That's the synopsis, and then everything else around it is just people saying it was a good book. But, ah, oh, it's also now a motion picture, so I'll get to read the book and then watch the movie. Um, so that's my large stack of books. 10 books to try and get through in a month. Um, hopefully I can get through at least three of them in the 24 hour readathon. Um, I'm hoping to get through the book club books within the next couple of days so that I can just return them to the library and I'll just write up on the book club page when um, the books are due what I thought of them because I tend to write my reviews down in a notepad anyway. Um, I'm trying to get through all my library books if I manage to get through all of those 10 books, I've still got nine library books that I need to get through and return. And then I can try and start on my own books if I don't get any more in the library. Um, so I hope you enjoyed seeing what I'm going to try and get through in a month. And I'll see you another time. Bye.